You're back with Third Degree. We continue our interview with former First Lady Grassa Michelle and look at culture, race and reconciliation. How do we talk to each other as simply South Africans? This year, culture has been a huge flashpoint, particularly with the proposed legislation around traditional courts. There are those who believe it is at odds with our constitution, as reflected in comments by this rural chief. I will never preside over a case of a gay and lesbian. Well, I do not know it. I don't have, I don't have a guideline to deal with it in the first place. Well, I, I have never seen it. I'm 50 years old now and I've never seen a gay and a lesbian in my community. And it's ungodly, it's immoral, it's, it's, it's you know, a gay, a gay and a lesbian. It, it's something that never existed. You know, it's something I dalwang and I gain a lesbian. I dalwang, I call it Zutalugu. It says that Yenzuang, Abandaba Imora, Nabandaba Gaza. And I think the problem is that sometimes those who are using tradition and the tradition to justify certain things, they say, oh no, because this is African. You know, there are, there are universal things which are everywhere. There's nowhere in the world where culture, I'm saying culture, not tradition. Culture is to oppress others. Culture never oppresses. Culture is exactly the opportunity of the best of expression with no limits of how you express yourself. But a tradition, tradition can be limiting, can be discriminatory. And these traditions are the ones which we have to visit. So let's not confuse tradition and culture and protect, try to protect the revisiting and change which is required in some of traditions and our social norms and to say because they are culture. No, they are not. They are not. There's no way where they say uh, human beings should, uh, should uh, oppress other human beings and you define it as culture. There's no way. Part of the complication, and it's always there in South Africa, is, is race, is that we, we talk across each other. I mean, we have the incredible legacy of Madiba, who, who um, reconciliation was a key part of his presidency and his leadership. And yet, when we are hurt and when we are angry, it's like we revert back and out comes you know, the race issue. You're black, you're white, obviously you're going to see it. How do we talk across that? How do we find each other? You know, uh, the, the, the reconciliation which uh, Madiba has uh, spearheaded, it was mostly a political reconciliation. And people question today, they, some of them, they say, oh, well, because he sold out, so he shouldn't. I mean, this reconciliation doesn't work. It does work. And it's not because Madiba is my husband. I'm saying if we had not had the kind of leadership which he offered us, we would have eaten each other in this country. What I'm saying is that political reconciliation doesn't mean social reconciliation. And this is what I'm trying to talk about. We need to find the framework now of dealing as human beings and not groups which have to share a constitution, but as people who have to share the same history have to say to share to, 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 to share the same destiny today and tomorrow to build it together in which now you have to accept one one another it's not like you have to tolerate one another uh -uh. to accept one another and to say there's value in you there's value in me regardless of having light complexion, or oh, I'm black, I have a light complexion than other blacks. It's not what makes me different from other people. So that conversation is the one I'm saying we have to have. Coming up, how do we build a more moral leadership in South Africa?